The following program is sponsored by friends and partners of Kingdom Connection. Kingdom Connection is a soul-winning ministry that is reaching the world through broadcasting, expansion into new church campuses, and global acts of compassion. By using the technology of today to fulfill the Great Commission, we are able to connect with countless people and reach hundreds of thousands of lives. Our broadcasts connect with people all around the world who say that the messages speak directly to them. Our ministry exists to help build a connection for strengthening your faith and living out your God-given purpose. And our missions and relief work helps connect you to desperate situations, showing the love of Christ through global acts of compassion. We feel the time is right and God is leading us to grow. And that only happens when you partner with us through Connection Partnership. For as little as a dollar a day, you'll be helping us reach further than we ever have before. For more information on how you can be a part of the ministry and enjoy exclusive partner benefits, go online or call 888-339-0049 for more information. We can't do everything, but together we can do something amazing. In 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 16, And you shall anoint, everybody say anoint, Jehu the son of Nimsha as king over Israel. And notice this, And Elisha the son of Shaph, of Abel of Mola, you shall anoint as prophet in your place. I want you to see and notice and mark two things in that scripture in your mind and if you want to in your Bible because this is an important message I'm going to share with you tonight about you and God's call and God's plan for your life. Sometimes we, we don't understand that the anointing is the anointing. There's not an anointing on the king and the anointing that's on the prophet. Notice two people were anointed in that one verse. There was a man who was anointed to be king and there was a man who was anointed to be prophet, the mouthpiece of God in the ministry. One is government. One is secular, we would call it. One is workplace. One is a job. The king is not necessarily seemingly uh, anything in the ministry, quote, the ministry meaning the fivefold gifts, and yet he had to be anointed. And, and, then, and then you have the, he said, pour oil on Elisha to be prophet or to be the mouthpiece to be in the ministry. So my point is this. The anointing is the anointing. There's no great anointing on a preacher. The same anointing that's on a preacher is the same anointing that's on the carpenter. The, same, the anointing is the anointing. The same anointing that is on the singer is the same anointing that's on the banker, that's on the businessman, that's on the car dealer, that's on the insurance salesman. We, we, we like to really act like God just anoints Prophets and priests and spiritual people, you know, in the church. When the truth is, the anointing is the anointing. And throughout the Bible, there, were not just, there was not just the anointing of the priest and those who would bring forth the word of God, but there was the anointing upon the kings. And Revelation 1, I believe it's verse 5, said he's made us kings and priests. Some of us are priests, spiritually speaking, meaning we're in the ministry full time. This is what we do. But others of you have been called to be kings. What did a king do? He would go out and he would conquer and he would, uh, he would take spoils in the, in the natural world and bring them back. And the king would provide provision for the vision that the prophet gave. And yet, both had to be anointed. I really think we need to understand 
that the anointing is just not something for preachers and people on a platform that have some kind of gift that we see every Sunday. But the anointing, folks, is on you. It is on you. And please don't minimize it because the anointing is the anointing. It's the Holy Spirit. And just like I don't dare walk into this pulpit without preparing my soul for my calling, I've read my Bible today. I've prayed today. I've studied today. I've sought God. I've asked Him for wisdom. I've asked Him to lead me and guide me. If I take my anointing serious, you have the same anointing that I have. You should never approach your job that you're not praying in the car on the way to your job. Just like I would, I would be afraid. I, I would be nervous. I would be... Um, you know, if I walk up here and I'm not prepared, I'm, if anything, I'm over-prepared because, you know, you got to give God something to anoint. And, and, and so, so here's, here's what I'm saying to you is just like I wouldn't approach my place as a, you know, New Testament priest or preacher as we would call it. You should not approach your anointing in a light way as a housewife or as a uh, computer analyst or whatever it is that you do, a mechanic, you should pray, you should prepare, you should stir up that anointing, you should say, like I said, God, I really need you tonight. What, what if I'd have called you this afternoon and said, I need you to, I need you to speak tonight. G Jason, are you ready? You're going to speak tonight. You know what you'd have done? Oh, my God. He'd have went in some room somewhere. He would have sweat bullets. He'd have cried. He'd have prayed. He'd have fasted. Why? Because it's we ought to approach our jobs that way if the anointing is the anointing and the Bible said he anoints kings and priests. It's not a plaything. And, and I'm not saying get crazy about it, but I'm just saying maybe, maybe we ought to approach our job like a preacher or a minister approaches the pulpit because that's your calling and that's your anointing. Maybe we should... Maybe we should approach our workplace like that is our... That is the anointed place that God has put me for such a time as this. And here's why it's important. That's your place of influence. This is my place of influence. I don't dare step into it not really, you know, having not prayed and not sought God and not said, Lord, please help me tonight. I would never do that. And your place of influence is your job or your home if you're, if you're a, 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 a homekeeper. And you should never just think of that thing as casual. The day that I get to where this is casual, I think God has a right to remove his anointing from my life. Isn't it interesting that Jesus took the cross through the marketplace? The Via Della Rosa was not a back street. He chose to carry the cross right down the middle of commerce and, and business and busyness and secular Jerusalem. The cross, we, we've got enough crosses in the church. We need some crosses in the business place. We need some crosses in the workforce. We need some people who will take what they believe and they don't have to preach to people all the time. You just live your life before them and your light shines and God anoints you and he blesses you and makes you an example. The path of the cross on his way to the crucifixion, he drug the cross right through the business district of Jerusalem. The public walk of the cross. I, I think that it matters that the oil was poured on the king and the prophet. Anytime you feel, listen, that the oil or the Holy Spirit anointing is exclusive only to our environment, you have just limited the possibilities of God. The anointing of God is not just for this, for this environment that we're in right now, praise, worship, and preaching. The anointing of God is not limited to that. It can be, you can be anointed 
tomorrow when you go to your job. And the Bible said, he said, anoint. If, it's a, if, if, if it wasn't necessary, why did God tell him, go anoint a king and then go anoint a prophet? Why? Because I want them to understand it's two anointings, but it's the same anointing. It's two, two callings, I should say, but the same anointing. And I take them both just as equal and serious as the other. God anoints people for specific tasks. You know, listen, if you're taking notes, write this down. The anointing is to enhance what you're gifted to do. That's what the anointing does. The anointing, the anointing comes to enhance what you're gifted to do. Some of you are gifted to sell things. Some of you are gifted to, to build a business. Some of you are gifted to, to, to draw. Some of you are gifted to work on big engines or build things with your hands. You're gifted. You're com gifted as a computer analyst. You're gifted. This is, this is what you do. You notice numbers. You notice things. You're, you just see things that other... That's the anointing that wants to come on your life to enhance what you're get already gifted to do. There's nothing worse than to see somebody try to do something they're not gifted to do. The anointing is to enhance what you're already gifted to do. David was already gifted to fight. He killed a bear, he killed a lion, and when the anointing came on him, he killed Goliath. But he was already gifted. Nothing is more powerful than an anointed professional on their job. Whatever your job is, God wants to anoint you to be successful. God wants to anoint you to carry the cross in the marketplace that you work. The anointing is the anointing. On the priest or on the king, it's the same anointing. The Bible said in 1 Samuel 16 that Samuel called for all the sons of Jesse. There were seven of them, and they all wanted to be anointed. And... He would not anoint them. He said, no, no, you're not the one. You're not the one. You're not the one. You're not the one. Is there not, are there not any more of these boys and, and, that you've got? And he said, I've got one more. And guess where he is? Out in the workforce. And, and they said, they made a, a phenomenal statement. Samuel said, send and fetch him. He's out tending the sheep. Send and fetch him for we will not sit down until he comes. I think the world is standing at attention waiting for the anointed marketplace people to come and the world's not going to change by a bunch of preachers. The world is going to change when people have power and influence in the workplace and, and people begin to see Christ in you, not because you're preaching all the time, not because you're praying in tongues over your lunch out loud, <laughs> but there's just something about bowing your head for 10 seconds and acknowledging the Lord and not to be seen of man and, and just living the life and being who you are and being excellent at what you do and working hard and be, getting along with people and all that stuff that goes with being a Christian. That it makes impact. And you need the anointing more than I need it because I'm not going to win the world. You are. We've overlooked this. We, we, we act like that the anointing's not necessary to do our job. But he said we won't sit down until the anointed one gets here. There's nothing wrong with wanting to do well on your job. There's nothing wrong with wanting to be successful. There's nothing wrong with wanting to be a great achiever. I want to release you from that. You know, God... God can give you tremendous and astonishing success if you will believe and be anointed with His anointing. The, the, the anointing will teach you, the Bible said, all things. 
See, we limit that. It'll teach you how to move in the gift of this, that, and the other. And that's awesome. I believe in all the gift of healing, miracle, all of that. But it also can teach you how to make a good business decision. Can teach you, should you buy that piece of land? Should you do this? Should you do that? Should you hire that person? Should you, should you do this? The anointing is the anointing. And if there's an anointing for the priest, the same anointing will work in your office. The problem is you're not applying it and you're not believing and you're not using and, and you're just like, like a preacher who walks to a pulpit who hasn't really stirred it up and hadn't really prayed. On your way to work tomorrow, I pray something gets in you that you take a little time. You don't have to go into deep intercession. And just turn the radio off and say, Lord, I acknowledge you today. You're my source. You're my success. You're my victory. And I praise you that you're with me today. I, I, I don't have a, a, a secular life and a business life. You are my all in all. And I just connect you to everything I put my hand to today. Give me favor. Give me grace. Give me anointing. Give me and enhance my ability to even do beyond what, I'm, what I know in my head to do. I won't. I want your anointing because the anointing enhances what you already are gifted to do. Praise God. You know, um, David was anointed and 22 years later, he became king of Israel. We act like it happened overnight. He was anointed and 22 years later, he became the king. Sometimes your anointing and your appointing does not line up, but just stay faithful to what God has called you to do. I'm saying to you today that you have to get to that place that you understand that the cross needs to go through the marketplace, the center of commerce. How many, and, and this, is, this is a question I want to ask you, how many of you, in this room tonight, I want to talk to you if you fit this category, are in full-time ministry. Let me see your hand. Full-time ministry. You just failed the test, about 99%. You just missed everything I just preached. I'm going to give you one more chance. How many of you are in full-time ministry? Could I see your hand? Exactly. Class dismissed, let's all go home. It's the truth. It's the truth. You need to see yourself as a full-time minister. This is what God has called me to do, and I'm going to do it. And I'm going to do it with the anointing. We've got enough crosses in the church. We need some in the workplace. Now, I want to close with this scripture, 1 John 2, 27. But the anointing which you have received of him abides in you, and you do not need that anyone teach you, but the same anointing, I love this, the same anointing teaches you concerning all things. Well, the anointing is just for, you know, um, all things. The anointing will teach you sheetrock. The anointing will teach you roofing. The anointing will teach you sales. Not just the religious stuff, all things. All things. Everybody shout, I'm anointed. I'm anointed. To, do all to do all things. So I want to close with this. Third John, and let me close with this because it's good news. Third John in verse 2. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper. Watch this. Everybody say these next few words. In all things. Isn't that good news? And be in health just as your soul prospers. Notice that your financial and physical strength are tied to your spiritual well-being. It's not how clever you are with finances, but how you're plugged in to the Son of God. 
You will not live under financial curse in Jesus' name. Beloved, I pray for you, and I love this church. I love every, you are the church. And I pray that you may prosper in all things. I'm going to put this on you and be in health. You, you point your finger at somebody and say, you be in health. As your soul prospers. You know why you're sitting in church on a Wednesday night? Because your soul is prospering. Stand up on your feet and give God the greatest praise you can if you believe that you're anointed. You, the anointing you have teaches you all things. It'll teach you how to be a banker. It'll teach you how to sell. It'll teach you how to take the business to a new level. It'll teach you how to build a website. It'll teach you. Praise God. And so I want to do something. I don't think I've ever done this before. But I want to ordain you. <laughs> I want to ordain you into your anointing and your ministry. And don't you ever, just like you don't expect me to ever, or any other preacher that preaches here, to ever walk to this pulpit and have not prayed and not read the Word and sought God and said, Lord, I really need you and I bow before you. and uh, You know, it's, it's what we do in private. <laughs> I mean, there's hours already, hours that, 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 that I've spent with the Lord this week. I do it every week. I'm not saying that to build myself. That's the secret. Then the anointing comes publicly because you've done something private. It, it's the same anointing, Cody. It's the same anointing. If you, if you get up privately in the morning and you open this book, just, just open it up. The anointing starts flowing. And if in your car or whenever you can, if you or take a little time to exercise and walk a little bit and pray. Find your routine and just pray and, and stir up your anointing because you have an anointing. Quit acting like you don't need it. <laughs> Quit. That'd be like me getting up here. I, I didn't pray none this week. I really don't need it. <laughs> I know the Bible. What an idiot. Well, wonder how many times God looks at us and says, you're an anointed king. Do you hear my heart tonight? Do you, or more importantly, do you hear God's word tonight? That he, he wants you to be anointed. How many of you would like to be anointed for your, for your workplace? Really? Raise your hands high. In the name of Jesus Christ, I, I remember when the preachers ordained me. So I'm going to do it for you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I stir up the gifts that are in you that have been given through the laying on of hands throughout your life. Men and women of God have laid hands and blessed you. And if they haven't, then through, throughout the, the next few weeks, get down here and let preachers pray for you. But I stir up the gifts that are in you. I stir up the dream that is in you. I stir up the financial anointing that is on you. I stir up the business workplace anointing on you. I pray that you would have wisdom, that the anointing would teach you all things, that you would just know instinctively to do things that it, maybe you weren't even educated uh, formally to know, but you just know it because the anointing teaches you all things. I pray that you would prosper in the work of your hands. And beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper in all things. And you be in health. Glory to God. I curse sickness and disease. I curse it in the name of Jesus. I curse and come against all manner of sickness and disease. You be in health. I pray you be in health. Glory to God. Somebody praise Him for your healing right now. Praise Him for your healing. Even as your soul prospers, come on, stir it up right now. 
Stir it up right now. You're, you're prospering in your soul. Be healed and prosper in all things, your marriage, your relationships, your retirement, in all things. In Jesus' name. Everybody say, Jesus, I make you Lord of my life. I trust you. Your blood cleanses me from all unrighteousness. I am anointed. That's right, I am anointed. And I will not fail. I will provide. I will have more than enough for me and my family and the kingdom of God. In Jesus' name, I'm blessed. I'm forgiven. I'm saved. Amen. God has given us an opportunity to reach nations right in the city of Jerusalem, and we're almost there. Jensen Franklin and Kingdom Connection Partners are working together to create a safe place for believers to encounter the Holy Spirit in the heart of Israel at the Celebration Center in Jerusalem. You can be a part of the moment when you send your best gift this month. Pastor Franklin has prepared a special series from the Holy Land, recorded on the very ground where Jesus walked, prayed, and taught in Jerusalem. And it's your gift when you give $35 or more this month. In this three-message series, you'll learn how to increase the presence of the Holy Spirit in your life, the significance in having your own time and place of prayer, how to discover your next steps for this season, and so much more. If God is calling you to make a difference for His people in a greater way, with a gift of $1,000 or more, we will send you our Celebration Center Kit, which includes our From the Holy Land series, along with a one-of-a-kind stone from Jerusalem, engraved with Psalm 122.6, commemorating your support of Israel through the Celebration Center. God is calling you to be a part of what's happening in Jerusalem. Call now with your best gift and watch God pour out blessings on you as you bless the nation of Israel. Life is real. Vivid, alive, beating, breathing. It happens behind closed doors and out in front. There's joy. There's laughter and chaos. Lifelong friendships are forged. Love is found. Moments cherished. And never forgotten. Life is a gift. And together, we are real family. Real friends. Real people. Experiencing real life. This program has been brought to you by the friends and partners of Jensen Franklin Media Ministries. For more information on this broadcast or for additional resources, go online at jensenfranklin.org.